Irish mountains, there I'll take my stand. Up on the Blue Ridge Mountains, there I'll take my stand. Rifle on my shoulder, six gun in my hand, and I've been all around this world. sister make three mama and papa a little sister make three you know they've come to see me hanging from the gallows tree and i've been all around this world working on that new railroad got mud up to my knees working on the new railroad with the mud up to my knees working for big john henry He's so hard to please, and I've been all around this world. Hang me, oh, hang me, I'll be dead and Just alone, and I've been all around this world. I'm very proud to be part of his team and pleased to introduce the Honorable Terry McAuliffe, the 72nd Governor of the Commonwealth of Virginia. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It is great to be back at Mountain Empire, the greatest community college in all of Virginia. Give them a great round of applause. Well, since I'm here and I said it's got to be true. And I want to thank our great Secretary of Technology, Karen Jackson, and for the great work she and her team have done. And Earl, I want to thank you for being back with us again today for this important, important announcement that we have. It's great to be back in Big Stone Gap. As many of you know, we spent Columbus Day weekend down here, uh, brought all five kids, wife and two dogs, and we had a great time. And the leaves had not churned yet, but flying in here today, I tell you, looking out that window, there is no prettier place in the United States of America than right here in Big Stone Gap. I mean. And I want to recognize Bill Shelton, stand up, our director of our housing community development for the great work that he does. Well, this is great news. Once again, that we have, as Karen mentioned, I spent a lot of time talking about building that new Virginia economy. Virginia is in a very unique place as the number one recipient of defense dollars. When you go through sequestration and we lose $10 billion, 11 through 13, we've seen loss of coal, textile, furniture, and tobacco. We have to constantly be reinventing our economy. And that's what we're here today to talk about. I'm very proud, as Karen had mentioned, we have done very well in bringing in new businesses uh, from all over the globe. I announced a 4% unemployment rate. It was 5-4 when I became governor. It's the steepest drop in 32 years. We're bringing in businesses from all over. But the goal is to make sure we're bringing jobs to every part of the Commonwealth so that every part of our great Commonwealth is growing. We know that the folks here in our rural regions are the most talented folks, the most hardworking folks you could ever imagine. They're dedicated to their family, dedicated to their community. And I tell as I travel, I'm the most traveled governor in the United States of America. I've been on 20 trade missions to dozens of countries. You want to make money in America, you come to Virginia and you come to our rural parts of Virginia, you will not have a more dedicated workforce than we have in our rural communities. Uh, so I want to thank all of you. I also want to thank the President of the United States and then the administration for the announcement we're doing today. I want to thank Earl Gold for his great work. He was the federal chair of the Appalachian Regional Commission who was here with us today. He brings with him some very important news for us today about the Commission's Power Initiative, a significant demonstration of the administration's support for communities in our nation's coal regions. These communities, as you know, are working very hard 
to build upon their strengths, to bring new business in, let it be through tourism or agriculture. They're also pursuing cutting edge technologies like cybersecurity and unmanned aerial systems. In fact, we were just up at UVA Wise for a great announcement that we had up there on cybersecurity to bring businesses from Northern Virginia here to make sure we're doing the cybersecurity, to make sure we're training everybody in cybersecurity. So the grants that we're announcing today are very important. The ARC is rewarding today, uh, Virginia, a lot of money to help support these brand new strategies. I'm happy to announce that ARC today is giving Virginia $6,651,327. Thank you, Earl. <clears throat> So let me announce the uh, four grants that we will be receiving today. First, I'm pleased to announce a $3 million ARC grant to the Friends of Southwest Virginia in Abington for the Building the Appalachian Spring Growing in the Economy of Southwest Virginia project. This comprehensive project will sig significantly enhance the outdoor recreation industry in Southwest Virginia which will attract more tourists as well as new businesses who are seeking a fantastic quality of life for their employees. The funds will be used to develop new access points along the New River, construct an Appalachian Trail Center in downtown Damascus, and create a 30-mile trail connecting the Brakes Interstate Park to downtown Hayside. And I can tell you, I just spent Columbus Day weekend at the Brakes Park, one of the greatest parks in the United States of America. To sit in that cabin and to look out at those mountains, there's not another place like it. I also want to thank the Virginia Tobacco Region Revitalization Commission, who are supporting this project with $300,000. Give them a great round of applause if you could. <laughs> Hello, Jack. I didn't see Jack Kennedy. How are you, buddy? In total, let's give Jack Kennedy a great round of applause. I didn't see him hiding down there. Good to be with you, Jack. In total, this project will increase travel and tourism expenditures by $30 million over the course of the next five years and create 60 new businesses and 200 new jobs in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Our second announcement today is the Industrial Development Authority in WISE that will receive $2.22 million grant from the Virginia Emerging Drone Industry Cluster Project to develop a drone operator workforce supporting our new unmanned aerial system sector. This project will train 64 new workers, including former coal industry employees, to operate this brand new cutting edge technology, which will leverage $15 million in investments and create 210 new and indirect jobs in the region. I can tell you that we need these skilled workers because this industry is so strong here in Southwest Virginia. It is my goal to see Southwest Virginia be the epicenter for the development of this new state-of-the-art technology. There's no reason why we can't have everything here. As many of you know, Virginia is part of the Mid-Atlantic Aviation Partnership and one of the six Federal Aviation Administration test sites for the integration of drones into our national airspace. I was excited, as you know, to be here in WISE last year for the first FAA-sanctioned delivery of humanitarian supplies to the remote area medical clinic. If you remember, we were on all the national news as we brought a prescription, was delivered by a drone. And that's obviously important in rural areas. If we have huge snowstorms or natural disasters where trucks may not be able to get to folks, we can now use the drones in an emergency situation to bring much needed uh, medicine to folks. For us, as I always like to say, it was a Kitty Hawk moment for the Commonwealth of Virginia. And we will continue to host more milestones as this industry continues to grow. In fact, as you probably saw in the news, uh, Several months ago, Virginia Tech was the site for the most extensive drone testing yet here in the United States of America. We had a partnership with Google's Project Wing and Chipotle where we actually <laughs> provided burritos for food deliveries using this new technology. So you picked up the phone, you ordered a burrito, the next thing you went out in your front yard and boom, all of a sudden the burrito was there for you. So. <laughs> Who knows what's next we could actually deliver. I'm really trying to build our craft brewery industry. I can just see it now. Kegs of craft beer being brought along by these little drones. 
Um, <laughs> uh, I'm Irish, what can I say? Um, our third ARC grant announcement today is $1.42 million going to Southwest Virginia Community College for the Southwest Virginia Regional Cyber Security Initiative. This project will bring together three colleges, Southwest uh, Community College as well as the Mountain Empire Community College and UVA's College at Wise to position Southwest Virginia as a regional hub for cyber security. This grant will fund a new cybersecurity credential program that will support startup companies and expand UVA Wise's bachelor degree program, providing space now for research and development activities. This initiative builds upon the MOU that I announced in July between the Center for Innovation Technology's Mach 37 Cyber Accelerator and the UVA Wise to advance cyber entrepreneurship and growth here in the region. This project will train 161 new workers and retain another 110 new jobs. I have consistently talked about cybersecurity. In addition, here in Southwest Virginia, we can be the hub for cybersecurity. I recently was elected chairman of the National Governors Association, so your governor is now chair of all the governors, and my big initiative, of course, is cybersecurity. For all the parents here today, let me say to you, right now in Virginia, we have 17,000 cyber jobs open right now. Starting pay, $88,000. Did all the parents hear me here? Now, you're all too young in this audience. But there used to be a movie called The Graduate, and plastics was the key word. I'm telling you today, folks, it is cyber. Starting pay, you do not need a four-year degree to get a cyber degree. You need more than high school, probably a two-year degree. That's why our community colleges are the sweet spot to get code writing, some computer application skills. We can move you right into a cyber degree. And you don't have to physically, where 565 companies were leading the nation on cyber companies, but you don't have to be in Northern Virginia, where many of them are headquartered. As long as you have access to the web, you can do this anywhere. And that's why I really think with the quality of life here and the work ethic that you have here, there is no reason that we cannot fill up our communities here. All of our students graduating, Mount Empire and others can immediately go right into the cybersecurity. So I'm pretty fired up on that and I want us to be the leader. And this announcement today really helps us do it. Finally, our fourth ARC grant today provides more than $11,000 to Round the Mountain, Southwest Virginians, Artisan Network located in Abington. And these funds will assist with grant writing and fundraising for regional projects to encourage breweries, yeah, see I was getting there, breweries that will support agriculture and tourism industries. Together these projects will help to create and retain more than 680 direct and indirect jobs in the Commonwealth. Each of these grants supports our work to reinvent and strengthen the Southwest Virginia economy. I have just announced our 165th craft brewery here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. What I love about the business, it brings in, in addition to the beer, but in addition to that, it brings tourism in, but also these craft breweries are locally sourcing all their ag products. So it really helps their blueberries and strawberries, their hops are all locally sourced. So it actually helps our agriculture. As you may or may not know, I was the first Virginia governor to visit all 23 community colleges. I am the first Virginia governor to visit all of our 37 state parks. <laughs> and I'm doing my best to be the first Virginia governor to visit all 164 craft breweries. <laughs> I am well on my way. But it, this is exciting for all of us. And I do want to thank Earl and all of his colleagues at the ARC for the work that they have done to help us bring economic prosperity to the region, to help our Appalachian communities take it to the next level. Folks, they've given us the resources. We have the educational tools here. There is no reason why we should not be leading on unmanned aerial systems, why we should not be leading on cybersecurity. This is what we can do in South Side and Southwest Virginia. And I do on behalf of every citizen Commonwealth of Virginia, I want to thank Earl and his team for putting their faith and confidence in us. So let's give him a great round of applause. Earl Gall from the ARC. <laughs> All right, buddy. <laughs> You're up. Yeah, great. <laughs> Well, first of all, for all that money, folks, let's give them a standing ovation. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. That's about 50 more to go, right? Yeah. Yeah.
It is always such a pleasure to follow Governor McAuliffe. It is, you know, you, this is something you look forward to every day, to follow, to come out right after him with all of his energy and all of his ideas, to be able to stand up and see if you can kill the audience. But, the, but today is a great day here in, in Southwest Virginia. And I really want to extend our appreciation to Scott Hamilton, the president of Mountain Empire Community College, for inviting us and helping us um, to, uh, to sponsor this event and really provide a, a, a great time and a, and a great environment for us to talk about the Power Initiative and then Power Work. It's also important for me to, to acknowledge the great work of Bill Shelton, uh, the Director of the Department of Housing and Community Development. Bill Shelton serves as the governor's alternate at ARC, and what that means is I have to pay attention to him. Uh, but what it also means is that Bill, who's been the alternate for five governors, um, has this depth of experience and knowledge. He has his credibility, but more important than anything else, he has a vision, and it's a strategic vision, on how to invest public resources in ways that leverages and creates opportunity, creates new private investment, and really provides great futures for communities. So Bill, I want to just tell you how much I appreciate all the work you've done, the, the partnership that we've been able to foster the last six and a half years, and I'm actually looking forward to continuing that partnership for several more. I also want to acknowledge, and you know, at, at the Appalachian Regional Commission, we don't do anything, we don't exist without an annual appropriation by the United States Congress. And today we have with us some uh, four staffers that I want to recognize. Uh, uh, Shane Clem from uh, Senator Warner's office, uh, Laura Moore from Senator Alexander's office in the back, uh, Jill Sellers from Senator Corker's office in the back also, and Michelle Jenkins from Congressman Griffith's office. I saw her here a minute ago. Pardon? Laura, Laura Blevins, I'm sorry, Laura Blevins from, Senator, from Congressman Griffith's office. I always do mess this up. Laura, I apologize. Um, so, Governor, I want to thank you for coming, for participating, and for all your leadership. The awards um, that the Governor announced are going to go to, to quote a, a famous Canadian philosopher, uh, Wayne Gretzky, are going to go to where the jobs are going to be. Their investments in a diversified Southwest economy, Southwest Virginia economy, their investments that will have a long sustained impact in Virginia. And Governor, I just want to correct you. We're not giving Virginia anything. We're investing in Virginia's future, and the taxpayers of the United States expect a return on that investment. And we expect jobs to be created, we expect wealth to be created, we expect communities to be stronger places to live. Today is part of the President Obama's partnership for opportunity work, opportunities and workforce and economic revitalization initiative, also known as POWER. ARC is announcing an additional $20 million in federal investments to support the economic diversification of coal impact communities. And earlier this morning, the Economic Development Administration announced $8 million in projects in the West Coast. These investments will help build on the great work the communities throughout Appalachia are doing, are doing to create jobs, revitalize Main Streets, to expand opportunities. The $20 million announcement today will invest in 28 projects in 93 Appalachian communities. They include 15 implementation projects and 10 technical assistance awards and three research initiatives that will help us understand the Appalachian economy. They will also create or retain 1,100 jobs and leverage over $47 million in additional investments throughout the Appalachian region. I'm very pleased to be able to announce today these awards, many of which have representatives here with us today. In Kentucky, we'll be awarding $1 million to the Federation of Appalachian Housing Enterprises. Uh, Pam Johnson is with us this morning, or this afternoon, uh, for their Appalachian Heat Squad project. We'll also be providing $1.8 million in critical infrastructure for the development of the Appalachian Wildlife Center. And we have Vernon Brown from the Department of Local Government Services, as well as David Letoff, Letoff from the Wildlife Center itself are with us today. In Ohio, we are, ARC is investing $1.4 million in the Hawking College, College Rises program. And with us, we have uh, Dr. Betty Young 
an additional $119,000 to rural action to develop the Appalachian Ohio Solar Chain Initiative. In Pennsylvania, ARC will be investing $500,000 for Innovation Works that's focused on working with entrepreneurs in, in the southwestern part of Pennsylvania, as well as $662,000 to the Southwest Pennsylvania Guardian Project that will focus on the work of working with manufacturers throughout the coal regions of southwest Pennsylvania. And we have with us this afternoon Lou Velotti of the Southwestern Pennsylvania Development District. Lou, you're here somewhere, I believe. There she is. In Tennessee, ARC is investing $1.5 million in the Marion County Regional Education Center, which is their community college, $353,000 in the Mountain Harvest Kitchen Incubator. Uh, we have with us this afternoon uh, Mayor Lynch of Unicoi, uh, Tennessee, and $400,000 in the Urban Utilities Broadband Initiative to help support the further development of broadband service in that part of Tennessee. In West Virginia, ARC is investing $1.5 million in the Sprouting Farms Project. Uh, Bill Woodrum from Marshall University Research Corporation is with us here today. This is a project uh, that will be working to uh, facilitate and encourage the development of, viber, of the viber agriculture industry in West Virginia to help support the development of local foods initiatives throughout the state. ARC is also investing $362,000 in the West Virginia Rural Health Infrastructure Loan Program to help support the development and the, and, and the construction of uh, small health care facilities in rural parts of West Virginia. $90,000 to the Randolph County Development Authority to work on creating a strategic plan for the Hardware Alliance Cluster. $140,000 to the West Virginia Connecting Communities Incorporated to help partner with the New River Gorge Association in planning the development of additional uh, connecting uh, trail systems in West Virginia. $150,000 in the Reconnecting Mandal Initiative which is working to support the development of a teacher's village in downtown Welch, West Virginia. And $105,000 to work with the Williamson Health and Wellness Center to turn what was once a pill mill into a vibrant community health care facility. $123,000 to the Region 4 Planning and Development Council to partner with the Center for Rural Entrepreneurship in West Virginia to work with a variety of a number of counties throughout that part of the state. We were also funding two uh, multi-state collaborations. Uh, the first is a $1.7 million two-year project with the Center for Rural Entrepreneurship to work with counties throughout Kentucky, West Virginia, and Southwest Virginia on implementing their entrepreneurship and local development initiatives, as well as $500,000 to rain source capital, and Scott Ewing is here with us today, to support the development of angel funds throughout the Appalachian region as a way of building and helping to support the, um, the entrepreneurial ecosystem of Appalachia. We're also working, on, we'll be working and have awarded several contracts to do a variety of research projects that will help map the, uh, the coal cluster infrastructure in the region and will work on focusing on the development of best practices that are being implemented throughout the region. These awards really build on the previous set of power announcements that we made in August of this year. Power initiatives together, all together with, with the work we've done with EDA, have amounted to $66.3 million in federal funds for 71 projects throughout the region that really focus on a whole variety of challenges and issues. ARC has invested $47.5 million in the last uh, 12 months to really to move forward and implement this program. But you know, the grants are important. The grants have helped to leverage and help to stimulate and help to encourage folks to collaborate to stretch and to really put their best for forward and best ideas on paper. But you know, every, every day I get up with the notion from the proposition that Appalachia is the next great investment opportunity in America. And we make that argument because of the folks who live here, because of the folks who are mayors and entrepreneurs and their nurses and their teachers come a whole variety of, of shapes and sizes and beliefs and passions but they share in common this idea that they wanted their communities to be better places for the kids than, and their grandkids than they were for themselves. It's like an army, it's like an Appalachian army of individuals who are dedicated to this work. And also within this region, we have these opportunities. We have opportunities around healthcare and, and energy and manufacturing and tourism and local foods. And the challenge that we share 
and the challenge that the power initiative takes on is how do we build the ecosystem? How do we build that entrepreneurial ecosystem so that when the entrepreneur collides with the opportunity, the chances and the likelihood of success are that much greater? And that's what the power initiative is working to do. It isn't just a grant to give to a community, but it's an investment in building a structure that works and provides folks the opportunity within Appalachia to move forward, to make their places and their communities better places for their kids and their grandkids than they were for themselves. So I want to thank each of you for participating, for each of you stepping forward and taking the leadership to move forward and to make sure that your community has these opportunities. And, these, and that as we move away from a coal-driven uh, economy, that we're driven in a way that is sustainable, that is challenging, and that helps us move the ball. So I want to thank you all for coming today. Now we're going to move, we're going to, in, in closing, uh, since we are here at Mountain Empire, and it is um, the, the hub, of, according to the governor, uh, of all things drone in Virginia, or will be the hub of all things drone. And so we have a whole group of drones, we have a number of students who are going to be outside, who will be able to show us their work, uh, the opportunities, and um, to cure all of our fascinations about what these things really are. Um, so I want to thank you for coming, and I will invite you to, to stick around and to see and to, to experience the drone experience with us as well. Thank you so much for being here. Hi, I'm Stephen Mullins, Power Grant Coordinator for the Southwest Virginia Workforce Development Board, Area 1. I'm based in Lebanon, but one of our major partners on this grant that was awarded this year in 2016 is Mountain Empire Community College. And I would like to introduce a couple of AmeriCorps volunteers who are now helping us at Mountain Empire. They are basically the Power Grant recruiters here in Big Stone Gap, and we're on location uh, let me let you talk to them, and I'll shut up for a moment. First is Corey France. Um, my name is Corey France. I'm a psychology graduate from the University of Virginia's College at Wise, and I'm working as a self-sufficiency coach at Mountain Empire Community College. Like you said, we are working to recruit people who are eligible for our power grant. And to my left, your right, is Jesse Ash. As Stephen said, my name is Jesse Ash. I'm here at Mountain Empire also as an AmeriCorps member, Power Grant recruiter. We are in phase one as of now, just getting the word out and trying to recruit people. Okay, so what we probably need to do is talk about some of the training and credentialing options that are available under this Power Grant. At Mountain Empire Community College, there we have a variety of trainings that might enable a dislocated coal industry worker to find a new job. And those involve 3D printing, welding, information readiness, building, construction, air conditioning and refrigeration or HVAC, and also building construction with electrical emphasis. And since these guys are new, I thought it would be nice to have them talk a little bit about their outreach efforts here in the beginning because we're shooting essentially for January for a lot of these cohorts, these trainings to start. Corey? So one of our first efforts was actually to set up here at Mountain Empire Community College for a annual festival type of thing they have out here called Home Craft Days. And so what we did was we were able to set up a booth, we had a variety of different flyers, and we had trifold brochures that we had made ourselves in the weeks prior, or the week prior because we've only been here for a very short period of time. And since then we've been working to get newsletters out to people, we've been working on some different flyers, and we've been in talks with different stations to just try to get the word out and reach as many people as possible so that we can get as many people in here and through the process and enrolled. Thanks, Corey. And Jesse, why don't you describe some of your early outreach efforts so far? Again, they've just hit 
the ground running. It's it's only been what two weeks, two and a half weeks. So at this point, um, here at the end of October, describe some of your networking and some of the outreach efforts where you've reached out to certain public officials to try to get some of the literature about the power grant offerings at Mountain Empire into the hands of dislocated coal industry workers and their families. Okay, as Corey said, we did set up at Homecraft Days. Um, that was pretty successful. Um, we got the okay this morning to um, distribute our information to every Head Start student, um, Scott County Wise, Russell, Lee. Um, we got the okay for five different bank branches. They're going to be distributing our information as well. Mm, we have an uh, actual radio interview tomorrow and another news broadcasting Monday. Okay. So you see, as I, I, I was serious when I said they hit the ground running because this is really going to help this program. And as a word for those who might be watching this and wondering, well, I've heard about power, the power initiative, the power grant. Uh, in fact, there's more than one power grant. This particular one is a partnership between the Southwest Virginia Workforce Development Board and several partners. And those include Mountain Empire Community College, Southwest Virginia Community College, and the Southwest Virginia Alliance for Manufacturing Centers of Excellence. And some other partners include the Virginia Tech Office of Economic Development, Adult Education in both Planning District 1 and 2, and others. A lot of people behind the scenes who are helping to make sure that this grant is successful. We're targeting people in the coal industry, those in the coal supply chain who've been laid off due to the lack of demand in coal for a number of reasons. A lot of layoffs for miners, power plant workers, and other people that we just classify as coal industry workers. And these folks have sometimes moved out of the area, unfortunately, to find other work. Sometimes they are working two or three side jobs. It could be electrical work, uh, house remodeling, uh, diesel mechanics, whatever their particular skills might happen to be. And they're finding it tough to make ends meet. Many of them have been on unemployment insurance benefits, and those are either about to run out or have run out a long time ago. This power grant will supply approved training so that if you are drawing an unemployment uh, weekly benefit, you can have a work search waiver and you'll be able to take this training what, wherever you happen to take it and still keep getting your UI benefits. But the idea here is to give some pathways to success for dislocated coal industry workers, whereas before they might not have even thought about 3D printing. They might not have thought about welding or building construction with an electrical emphasis, or HVAC, or whatever the training cohort that they might happen to choose. Let me mention something else. It, uh, as an example, there could be a laid off miner who has, for example, experience in welding. Maybe they could do MIG, TIG, plasma arc, but they don't have a certificate. They don't have a credential from, say, for example, the American Welding Society which is the credential that employers look for that says you know what you're doing when it comes to welding. Well, let's say this person comes in and we refer them to one of the centers of excellence. There's one in Duffield, there's one in Bluefield, and there's one in Abingdon for those of us living in and around Area 1. This person may be ready for an AWS credential. They may need some brush-up training up to two weeks. That can be conducted by the Centers of Excellence instructors. Or if they feel like the person needs a little more work, there are welding cohorts not only at Mountain Empire Community College, but also at Southwest Virginia Community College. And they could go take that class and then come back for the AWS credential. The Centers of Excellence can also help dislocated coal industry workers with two other credentials. One is the NIMS certificate, that's the uh, National Institute for Metalworking Skills. And a NIMS certificate basically means when it comes to precision machining and metalworking, you know what you're talking about. You've been assessed, tested, and passed. And the other area is mechatronics or industrial maintenance. The Centers of Excellence have programs there where they can test you in uh, what's called Siemens Level 1 or Level 2. Siemens is a 
huge company based out of Germany, and they are the mechatronics credentialing uh, entity in the world. So you see there's a lot of partners involved, and we're focusing here on Mountain Empire Community College. If you have questions about these particular trainings and the credentials that go with them, I invite you to contact either me or you could contact Corey or Jesse and just you could come and have a tour of Mountain Empire. They would love to have you come, talk with their instructors, take a look at these cohorts. And for more information, I'll let Jesse and Corey give you their individual information. If you're interested in these training cohorts, have questions, wonder about the various credentials, wonder about the number of jobs that might be available after you finish the training, they have all the answers. First of all, Corey. Um, the number here at Mountain Empire Community College is 276-523-2400 and my extension is 383 and you can also contact me at cfrance at mecc.edu. And for Jesse, your contact info. My extension here at the college is 371 and you can contact me at jash at mecc.edu. And as I say, they'll be glad to talk to you about the individual cohorts, whether they're 3D design or welding or air conditioning and refrigeration or construction or electricity or whatever, what, what have you. They'll be able to tell you. They can even bring you on campus for a tour if you'd like to talk to the instructors or if you want to look into how many jobs might be available in a certain area to try to make up your mind. Again, the power grant is for dislocated coal industry workers. That includes miners, power plant workers, and anyone who has worked in the coal industry supply chain. And my info is 276 883 That's in Lebanon. And my email address is s. Mullins at weaone.com.